Hey guys, and today I'm wearing the JLC Reverso Squadra, one of my favorites. And I kind of just want to talk a little bit about confessions, or I want to make a confession. The funny thing is that as you really get into the hobby, you start to notice that specific watches, uh, whether it's brands or specific watches within brands, end up developing these cult followings over time. What I What I kind of want to confess is and I'm curious about everybody else, is is there a watch that it feels like when you look at the rest of the community's opinion on it, you feel like you're supposed to love, you're supposed to really like, you're supposed to want one, you're supposed to have one. And deep down, you know, maybe you haven't said it out loud or you haven't told anybody else, but you just, you're just kind of eh about it. You know, like you don't really, it's not necessarily that you hate it, but you don't love it. I kind of have a, a watch like that. So back when I got George's watch to mod, and here's why I had a shameless plug. If you haven't seen George's watch mod video, uh, make sure to check that out. But when I got his watch or picked up his watch to mod, there was a couple watches that he lent me for me to try out. Uh, and one of them was the SKX 007 and the other was a Vostok Amphibia. So I had told him, or we had had a conversation about this initially, that you know, I I knew the SKX was epic and it has this huge following, but that like it didn't really do it for me personally. So he lent it to me and, you know, kind of the same thing with, with the Vostok. You know, I, there was so much hype about it, but it, it never necessarily piqued my interest personally uh, enough for me to buy one. So I took both watches home. I wore them for a while and I my opinion regarding the SKX 007 personally hasn't changed and I guess that's kind of that's my personal watch where it feels like you know there's so much pressure to love this watch to like this watch you know it's a great watch and, and I understand that it is right it's ISO rated it's impressive when you consider what it gives you versus how much it costs especially when you look at comparable offerings from other brands and I, I get all that and I'm definitely not going to argue against it but you know, for 200 something dollars, that's not enough for, for me to buy it. It's not enough for, for me to have one. I don't, there's nothing that I find necessarily specifically unappealing about the watch, right? I mean, for the most part, from a design perspective, it's pretty straightforward, pretty safe even, you might say. I mean, aside from the case, which has a different design than cases you you normally see. But it just, it's just kind of blah, right? Like it doesn't bother me, but it doesn't get my attention either. So that's kind of, that's that's the watch for me that I know, like, you know, you're supposed to love it and it's this great watch, but it just, it just doesn't do it for me. Looks wise, aesthetically, there's nothing about it that reaches out to me for me to purchase it, you know? And, and it's the same with the 009. It's the same with, you know, with a Pepsi bezel. It's, it's okay, you know? I mean, it's not bad looking. I get it. You know, it's great value. Uh, people that like that, that style and are looking to get the most out of that amount of money, you know, I certainly steer them in that direction. Hey, check it out if you like it. You know, you're not getting ripped off. But I don't, I don't personally like it. Now, the other one that he had me try on was his Vostok Amphibia. And I got to tell you, first off, anybody that's been part of the channel for a while knows that my biggest thing has kind of been, I don't like watches. Not that I don't like, but I don't, I never necessarily wanted to purchase a watch without a date. For me, it's just more practical to have a watch with a date. I, I wear it more often. I had the de facto Eins one-handed watch that didn't have a, a date on it. And I loved it and I wanted to keep it but I just didn't wear it. And every time I wore it and I looked down, I, I found myself wishing, oh, man, I need, the, I need the date. And then I'd pull out my phone and I'd be going through that through that whole thing. When he handed me the Vostok Amphibia that didn't have a date, I thought, now, ah, okay, I, I like the dial. You know, it's got a, a really beautiful silver dial. It's not your common black, white, red, you know, those basic colors. It kind of falls in between with this really shiny gray dial that catches the light really nicely. And, you know, I found that I was looking down at it a lot. And with the two that he lent me, you know, I wore the SKX for a little bit. I tried to give it a fair shot to see if it's something that I would fall in love with aesthetically. And that never clicked. But I wore the Vostok Amphibia nonstop. I just liked the look of it. 
So I did actually end up getting my own Vostok Amphibia, and that's this exact model I ended up getting. So I do have that one as part of my collection now. I didn't do like an unboxing and all that, uh, but I've had it, and I, you know, I'm enjoying it. For, for I'm enjoying it for what it is, right? I didn't expect some super high quality piece. But I, I got it for $43 on eBay, so I'm definitely not complaining about what I got for the price that I paid. My confession is that I don't love the SKX. I'm not moved enough by the aesthetics of it to go out and purchase one. You know, I could maybe see myself picking one up in the future to, to mod it, to change it to look like something that I find more appealing. But on its own, you know, unmodded, it's okay. It's just, it's just okay, right? There's a lot of watches that I look at and I think, oh, it's not bad, but I don't want to buy it either. And that's kind of really where the SKX falls for me personally. So I was really just kind of curious with the rest of you guys, are there watches or are there pieces that you hear about that you feel like there's all this pressure for you to like, or you're supposed to like, cause it's a great piece and it has this huge cult following and you know, it's death to you if you say that you don't like it. And if there is, I'd like to know what your watch confession is, really. What's the watch that deep down you don't necessarily get the hype about? Maybe you understand all the respect for the brand or the model, but aesthetically, you don't get what everyone's excited about. Um, I'd love to hear what those pieces are for you guys. And I'm certainly not going to judge you and we might actually share some of those pieces. So if you enjoyed this video or found it entertaining, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And as always, if this is your first time here, don't forget to subscribe for more videos like this. That's it for this one. CG out.